Alexander Fleming's discovery of penicillin in 1928 and the subsequent mass production of the drug in the 1940s was a major turning point in the history of medicine. It allowed doctors to treat and save millions of people from once untreatable infections. The discovery of penicillin was the beginning of antibiotics. Some say that it was perhaps the greatest discovery in the history of medicine. In the years leading up to it, millions of people died every year from many different forms of infection, such as pneumonia and gangrene. Doctors had no way to treat their patients' infections. Edward Jenner was credited for the creation of the smallpox vaccination in 1796. His discovery saved the world from the horrible outbreak of the smallpox virus. Smallpox was a deadly and highly contagious disease. The virus wasn't completely wiped out until 1980, almost 200 years after the vaccination was first used. Jenner's creation has changed the history of medicine and saved millions of lives. The discovery of the smallpox vaccination also inspired many other life-changing discoveries. Seven years before his discovery that would change the world, Alexander Fleming discovered lysozyme. During a bad cold, Fleming cultured his nasal mucus and after a few weeks, found that bacteria had grown everywhere but on the mucus itself and the area surrounding it. It appeared that his mucus had antibacterial properties. The antibacterial substance in the mucus was called lysozyme. Fleming also found that a person's tears, pus, and blood also contain lysozyme. Even though Fleming's discovery of lysozyme was important, without his discovery of penicillin, millions of people today would be dying of the simplest cuts and infections. The amount of people that died from infection was overwhelming. Every hospital had a septic ward, filled with patients with chronic discharging abscesses, sinuses, septic joints, and sometimes meningitis. Chambers of Horrors seems the best way to describe those old septic wards. Dr. Charles Fletcher. Doctors needed a way to treat their patients. They needed a miracle. In September 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered that miracle. He was going through his old petri dishes at his lab when he noticed something unusual. On one of the agar culture plates, the bacteria known as staphylococci had grown across the entire surface of the plate, but the bacteria on and around a strange mold on the plate had been killed. Fleming did not know where the mold had come from or why it had killed the bacteria. Fleming later identified the mold as Penicillium notatum so he called the bacteria-killing agent in the mold penicillin. Fleming did not realize that this mold had the potential to cure bacterial infections in humans, so the penicillin was put on a shelf and forgotten about until more than a decade later when Dr. Howard Flurry and Dr. Ernst Chain began working with penicillin. They had a team of scientists working on the job of figuring out a way to isolate the penicillin. During their research, two chemists, including Chain, had found a way to concentrate the penicillin. The process was long and tedious and used a lot of the penicillium mold just to create a very small amount of pure penicillin. This process of isolating the penicillin was later improved upon by a biochemist named Norman Heatley and was much more efficient. The newly isolated penicillin was first experimented on mice. The results of the experiment showed that the penicillin could successfully be used to treat infection. One year later, Flory's penicillin was first given to a human patient. The patient made a quick recovery, but there was not enough penicillin made to finish his treatment, and he sadly died. Once there was enough penicillin made, other patients were treated and better results followed. The penicillin was going to be used to treat British soldiers fighting in World War II, but at the time, Germany was bombing Great Britain and there was no way penicillin could be produced on a large enough scale to help the British soldiers. 
In 1941, Howard Florey and Norman Heatley traveled to the United States to try and get their help in producing the penicillin. The people at Oxford University that were working on the problem decided to try to bring the fungus to the United States where, uh, where of course, nobody's bombing anybody. Once Florey and Heatley arrived in the United States, they were referred to the Department of Agriculture's Northern Regional Research Laboratory in Peoria, Illinois. Andrew Moyer and Kenneth Raper were the two scientists at the lab assigned the job of mass producing the penicillin. One of their jobs was finding a productive strain of penicillium mold to use. The most effective strain Moyer and Raper found was from a moldy cantaloupe found at a local market in Peoria, Illinois. This strain was used to produce large amounts of penicillin. Fermentation was the process used to mass produce the penicillin. The Northern Regional Research Lab was a fairly new laboratory known for its expertise in fermentation, so it was the perfect place to mass produce the penicillin. Before penicillin had even started to be produced, the United States government had factories built that would one day make penicillin. By 1943, pharmaceutical companies across America had started to manufacture the drug. Once enough penicillin had been made, the drug was shipped out to American and British soldiers. The American soldiers on the D-Day invasion were accompanied with a sufficient supply of penicillin and the death toll from wound infections were greatly decreased. Penicillin was a success. It had become the miracle drug of World War II. Gangrene, from which millions have perished in past wars, has been conquered by the miracle of penicillin. Scientists are manufacturing this wonder drug in enormous quantities to meet the demands of the Allied armies on every front. Many diseases, such as rheumatic fever, dramatically decreased within a little more than a decade. Penicillin also had a large impact on the economy. Hospitals spent a lot of money treating patients with infections they couldn't cure. After penicillin, hospitals were able to more quickly and definitively treat and discharge patients with infections, dramatically reducing healthcare costs. If we didn't have penicillin or any other antibiotics today, the United States would have to spend billions of dollars more on healthcare. Penicillin is still changing the world today. Without it, we would not have other life-saving antibiotics like streptomycin, which treats tuberculosis, a deadly disease that kills one person every 20 seconds. Amoxicillin was another antibiotic that came from penicillin. Today, amoxicillin is commonly used to treat strep throat, pneumonia, and many other infections. Penicillin could not cure every infection, but out of it came many other antibiotics that maybe could change millions of lives. Alexander Fleming, Howard Forey, and Ernst Chain changed the world of medicine. They were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1945 for their work with penicillin and contribution to humanity because of it. Millions of people's lives have been saved and are still being saved because of their work. Without the discovery of penicillin, thousands more people would die every day and doctors would have no way to save them. What started as a simple mold has turned into a life-saving miracle drug. Penicillin has changed the lives of many people and will hopefully continue to do so for many years to come. <laughs>